This video covers drape simulation in HyperMesh. A kinematic draping algorithm is used, and it's primarily intended as a first pass tool to quickly improve the accuracy of angles for structural simulation, and to a lesser extent to identify potential problem spots where wrinkling is likely. Accordingly, in its current form, it doesn't have manufacturing specific capabilities for ply manipulation, like the ability to apply darts or other cuts, but it does still provide some interaction for manufacturing. Flat patterns can be generated, visualized, and exported, for example. In HyperMesh, we'll go ahead with a file open model. And in the drape simulation folder, I will open this hat ply based model. This is the completed model from the introductory tutorial, and we're simply going to apply uh, drape data on the plies we created previously. There are several methods to access the tool. I can run a drape simulation on any selection of a single ply by right click and selecting drape and kinematic drape. Similarly, I can shift select multiple plies and access the same tool here. And if I want to quickly drape all the plies within a laminate, I can select the laminate and right click drape. Input for the tool. First is the seed point. This is the location on the mesh that the ply first touches the tool. So in our case, I'll go ahead and select something about right there. For a method, we have two basic methods. The first is called quadrants, and it represents a ply being placed on the tool at the seed point, and then pushed uniformly into the tool in all locations, propagating like a rock in a pond. The other option is linear, where the ply is pushed into the tool at the seed point, is pushed into the tool in the fiber direction of the ply until the end of the ply is reached, then a small step is taken in the two direction, and the process is repeated. Usually these give similar answers, but I generally just pick the one that's closest to how uh, the part will actually be built. In this case, I'm going to use linear. We do have other advanced options. Typically, these don't need to be touched, but uh, generally, if I'm in the advanced options, the two that I'm looking at are the element size, the drape tools having a hard time with uh, curvature, for example, with a very coarse mesh. You can reduce the drape element size. And the other uh, input that I will change, depending on what I'm trying to accomplish, is to increase the max allowable shear, at which point the draping simulation would stop, to something very high. And I don't use this to generate angles for structural simulation typically. Usually I'm using it uh, to run a drape simulation, uh, ideally to completion, as a tool to determine locations that wrinkling is likely to occur. Again, usually the defaults are okay. If you do have uh, any questions on any of those inputs, the most common inputs are documented in the set of slides with its tutorial, and there is a full suite of documentation. With my seed point selected and my method set to linear, I'll go ahead and apply. And as the tool runs, a table will be generated for each ply, which contains the uh, angle corrections from the nominal orientation on each ply, as well as any thickness corrections from the nominal thickness on each ply. When the simulation is complete, I can come to the Review tab and choose any ply that has been draped. And first we'll look at the drape mesh. If I can, I can zoom in here and see the draping orientations that will be uh, mapped to my ply. 
I can plot the shear results. I'm looking for locations of higher shear. I can look at flat pattern. For each ply, this is the a shape which should be cut out to drape onto the as trimmed part. These lines here represent the one and two directions on the drape al algorithm. So in this case, the fiber direction and then the two direction. And finally, I can plot any changes in thickness due to draping. Further, I can come to the export tab. I can uh, specify a directory to export flattened ply shapes to. I can select one or more plies for which I want to export that flattened shape, and that'll write out a, a CAD file with lines defining the flat, uh, flat pattern. If I want to visualize a comparison of the draped fiber angles uh, versus the nominal ply orientation, I can do that by closing out of the kinematic drape dialog. I'll come to my elements ribbon and I will select review orientation. Coming over to ply directions, by default we have the fiber orientation. This is only the nominal fiber orientations plotted as vectors on the screen. And additionally, there's a check for the drape fiber orientation, which so shows the correction in the fiber angle due to draping. So usually I'll have both of those checked. I only want to see the X or one direction, the fiber direction. And if I apply, I can zoom in here and look at the red vectors, which are the nominal fiber orientation and the yellow vectors which are the draped fiber orientation. And as I advance through the list of plies, I can see the changes on each of those plies due to draping. After I've run a drape simulation, I can always come back and access the results by again right clicking uh, a laminate or ply and coming to kinematic drape. And with that, that's the kinematic draping solution in Hypermesh.